right at the top of the Mercedes AMG GT family tree, you find this, the AMG GTR. This is the hardcore model. This is the big power one. This is the track focus model. This GTR is everybody at AMG squaring up to the guys at Porsche Motorsport and saying, anything you can do, we can do better. GTR gets stiffer springs and thicker anti-roll bars as part of a more focused chassis setup. The tracks are wider too, increasing stability. The front wings, the roof and the prop shaft are all carbon fibre, but overall the GTR is only 15 kilograms lighter than the GTS, or 30 kilograms with this car's optional carbon ceramic brakes. Even so, the GTR weighs more than 1600 kilograms. There's clever active aero that adds downforce over the front axle, four-wheel steering, and look how far back in the body the engine sits. When Mercedes says the GTR is front mid-engined, they really mean it. Peak power is 577 bhp with 516 pound-foot of torque. Mercedes claims 0-62 in 3.6 seconds. You join me in the cabin of this AMG GTR. These AMG GTs have got such distinctive interiors. I really like them, actually. You sit low really low with a great view forward. The bonnet is super long, it kind of reaches into the next county and you can't actually see where it ends. And then we've got really high transmission tunnel which makes you feel nice and snug. These two banks of four buttons are supposed to look like a V8 engine. Is that classy or not? I don't know. This car, the GTR, has got these fixed back bucket seats which are actually they're really really comfortable. I think they're more comfortable than the standard chairs in other GTRs and of course they're really supportive as well. Yeah, it's a really, really cool driving environment, this. Do you like this carbon trim here, this matte carbon? 3,000 pounds that costs. That's a hell of a lot of money for a bit of carbon trim. This traction control system is important. That's one of the key features of this GTR. We'll come back to that when we're on the road. Yeah, it's a really cool cabin, this. So it looks cool, it's got a great cabin, it's got all sorts of very clever kind of race car derived tech on it, but how does this GTR actually drive? We've had all sorts of weather over the last two days and right now it's chucking it down. It's soaking wet out here, the roads are really, really slippery. But we have had some dry weather so I can tell you a bit about what this car's like to drive in all conditions. You look at a car like this, a hardcore track focus model, lots of power, aggressive tyres, and you kind of wonder if it's just going to be completely compromised out on the road. Being completely honest, this car is clearly set up to be at its best on a smooth road. I've driven it on smooth roads and it feels really, really good. Even when you come into a compression or dips or any of those kind of features in the road, it feels fantastic, really nicely damped. Of course, the engine is kind of almost underneath the dashboard. So rather than being nose heavy, it actually feels really, really well balanced. But you can see that this is not a smooth road. I'm bouncing about all over the place. And the suspension just doesn't have the pliancy to deal with it. So those bumps and ridges really upset the car. It feels fidgety. It thumps through potholes quite hard. So there's some real quality going on with the suspension work here. It's just not really cut out for a difficult road like this one. And this car's just not cut out for wet conditions. We've got lots of spring rate, we've got big thick anti-roll bars, and we've got super aggressive Michelin Cup 2 tyres. All of which means the car in these conditions just doesn't have much grip. And do you know what? It's actually pretty scary. I don't mind admitting that. But I have driven it in the dry, and I have to say, it feels really, really good in dry conditions. You get masses of turning grip from these big, wide, Cup 2 tyres, masses of traction as well. We've got the gearbox slung out over the rear axle, it's a transaxle. All that weight of the gearbox pushes the rear tyres into the ground. The twin clutch gearbox works really well with quick, snappy gear shifts. This powertrain is as effective as it is characterful. Engine, so it's the 4 litre dry sumped V8, hot V with the turbos in the V for much sharper response. And I have to say, 
It's one of the most responsive turbo engines out there. It's a proper soundtrack, got a thunderous V8 kind of background soundtrack to it, overlaid with this noisy popping and banging exhaust, which I actually really like. This traction control system is super trick. That's kind of GT3 racing car technology. You first turn the stability control off completely and then you can fiddle with the level of intervention. Turn it to the right and you get more intervention. Turn it to the left and you get less intervention and a bigger crash. The amazing thing about it is that you've got nine different increments and even from one increment to the next you can really feel the difference. And once you find the right level, the system manages the power, manages the torque, and manages the traction so well that you can put your foot down and the car just goes do, 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 and drives away from the corner really, really nicely. So it doesn't kill the throttle, it doesn't kill the drive, but it doesn't light up the tyres either. That's really nice. I think we should expect to see this sort of system on other AMGs in the future because it works really, really well. The original AMG GTs from a couple of years ago had to be completely honest, bizarre steering, kind of spookily light, ultra quick, no real sense of connection at all. And it just meant that you felt nervous in the car for the first 20, 30 miles. It took a long time to actually get used to it. With this GTR, they've improved it massively. They've just calmed it down, taken some of the hyperactivity out of it a little bit. And so now it's just so much more intuitive you can start to pour the car into a corner in dry conditions. You feel like you've got a good sense of connection to the front axle. And even though those front wheels are a million miles away, you really felt like you could get right on top of it on the way into a corner. This car has also got rear wheel steering. That's kind of standard across the board for ultra high performance cars these days. And you can feel it working at low speeds at very low speeds. I mean, when you're maneuvering around, you can just feel the rear axle helping the car to negotiate a turn. At higher speeds, you're not aware of it at all. I think one of the important things about this car dynamically is that it's kind of got a narrow operating window. So get it on track or get it on a smooth road and a dry road, and it is spectacularly good fun. It feels exciting, it feels raw, it's focused, and it's really, really good to drive, involving, communicative. But when you get it on a bumpy road and when it starts raining, it's just out of its depth. It stops working and actually becomes a proper handful. Here comes the inevitable 911 GT3 comparison. The thing about the GT3 is that it doesn't have a narrow operating window. Even on similar Cup 2 tyres, it feels drivable in the wet and it works on a bumpy road. And of course, it's fantastic on a circuit or on a dry road as well. There are some important ways in which this GTR is better and more exciting and more dramatic than a GT3. It's got more power, so it feels faster. I think it looks more dramatic. I think it's got a more interesting cabin. But as a driving device, that GT3 has still got its nose in front. AMG deserves boundless respect for getting into this kind of hardcore performance car space. Not many people have actually done that, have they really? Ferrari with the 458 Speciale perhaps, but that costs twice as much as the 911 GT3. That GT3 has kind of gone unchallenged for years and years and years, but finally someone has come along, AMG has come along and had a proper crack at it. That takes some nerve, you've got to respect them for that. Hopefully this battle between AMG and Porsche Motorsport is going to go on and on and I cannot wait to watch it unfold.